Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You are listening to episode 20 of the How to Life podcast. I'm Dr. Laura Jagged, and thank you so much for joining in today. You may not know it, but there are three different types of shows that I do here. Instructional, inspirational, and insightful. And they're all intended and designed to help and guide you in your life. Today's show is insightful. I would like to share my insight on the importance of sleep and rest and taking breaks throughout the day. I have come to this knowing from my own experience in my own life and seeing how it affects me and how it affects others. In my job as a chiropractor, I have seen many people who come to me with physical problems because they have too much stress in their life and they're tired. Not enough rest, and so the body just breaks down. And a lot of people don't like to take breaks because they think that it's lazy or it's for weak people or if they stop, they're going to lose their momentum. But I would like to make a case today to tell you how important taking a break is and really how beneficial it can be to your momentum, to the quality of your work, and to your productivity. In school these days, they often have scheduled break, 10 minutes between classes, a lunch break. It's so important. If you're doing homework, you may find that breaking up the monotony and taking a break every now and then helps you reset and continue in a better frame of mind and do better work. In your job, if you are working, take your scheduled breaks. Give yourself that time. You'll find that you're going to do a much better job and feel much better about where you are if you're well rested. And even if you are raising children at home, which is the hardest job of all, schedule time to take a break. When your kids go down to rest, to sleep, lay down with them. Just give yourself a few minutes to reset, recharge, so that you can do your best in taking care of them. Now, I say all these things with much confidence, but this was not always the case for me. I was one who would push through, push hard, go without, and really run myself ragged, all in the effort of doing better for others. And now looking back, I think, where did this come from? And honestly, I would say that I had this sense of responsibility, and I felt if I, if I took time to myself, I somehow wasn't being responsible. And worthiness definitely played a factor. I hate to admit it, but I didn't feel I was worthy to take a break or to rest. And I felt I had to prove myself, and that if I struggled and sacrificed enough, then I would be worthy to earn a well-deserved rest and break. I also didn't want to be seen as lazy. And in my mind, resting was laziness. So mostly it was me that was putting that label on, not anybody else. And a lot of people think that if you're not killing yourself, you're not serious about whatever you're doing. You don't want it enough. You have to struggle and sacrifice in order to earn that reward. If you don't work hard, you won't get that A or that promotion or that recognition, so you push yourself to the limits. And then there's this thought as well. If I don't keep going, everything will fall apart. It's an old style of thinking, and it's not beneficial at all. It's actually exhausting, and it's depressing. I did it. I think many people still do it. Does this sound familiar to you? Do you do this? Do you believe there's such a thing as good stress? I would like to make a case that there is not. And I hope at the end of this talk, you will be able to see that good stress is really not stress at all. It's actually inspired action. Convincing yourself that you need a break is a whole different mindset. And if you're not used to it, I understand you might be a little resistant to this information. But hopefully at the end of this time, you're going to maybe give it a second thought. And maybe reevaluate something, or maybe just take a baby step and try one of these little things out. First, I want to talk about the negative effects of not taking a break or resting, the cons, so to speak. 
I think the thing that's most familiar to people and the thing that's going to resonate with most people is when you don't take a break, when you're tired, your stress levels go up. There's increased stress. You all know what that means. Your muscles are tight. Your body is sore. Your stomach gets upset. You're always working in sort of crisis mode. It's really uncomfortable. But when you're in it, it just becomes familiar and you keep doing it. It's a really weird dynamic. But this stress is eventually going to lead to health problems. It's going to decrease your quality of work. You'll see a decrease in production, an increase in depression. And when you have an increase in depression, it carries over into your relationships with your spouse, with your partner, with your children. There are many, many studies that show what happens to the body under repeated and prolonged stress. And I'm not going to go into the scientific details of what happens, but there are are plenty of things out there that you can research if you are interested in that. I'm just going to talk about the symptoms, and maybe you'll relate to some of this, but I want you to be open to hearing these very real situations that are fallout from increased stress, which comes from decreased rest. For me, I don't really need a study to see the effects of lack of sleep or increased stress. I saw it every day in my practice. I've witnessed people I know go through it, and I've had my own personal experience as well. But if you need scientific proof, if you need studies, if you believe in them, then let me tell you about what they overwhelmingly have found. When you don't take a break, when you don't rest, when you don't sleep, you will see your body break down. It will lead to diseases. It'll lead to pain, increased susceptibility to illness, breakdowns of organs and systems. It's everything. It decreases chemical, neurological, biological, mental, emotional, metabolic systems, all of it. All of them are harmed if you are operating in crisis mode, which is what stress is. There are two parts of the nervous system. You have your, let's call it your operating system that controls everything under normal conditions. And then you have what you've probably heard before, the flight or fight response. When that part of your nervous system kicks in, you go into crisis mode. Your brain senses danger and your body starts shutting down things that aren't important and turning on to high levels, critical levels, other parts of your body with the intention of escaping danger. The brain senses this danger and the urge is to get away from the stress or the danger as quickly as possible. And the body can operate like this very well in short bursts. You'll have an increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, The goal here is to stay alive and your body will go into that crisis mode and do what it needs to do to get you removed from that situation. And then as soon as the threat is gone, your body returns to its normal operating capacity. But it is possible to condition yourself to turn off the signal that tells your body to return to its normal state. It doesn't happen naturally. It's the repeated ignoring of signs that you need a break. A break, resting, allows your body to recuperate. It allows your brain to reassess the situation, and it allows the body to reset and rebalance. It's such an amazing system. The body always, always tells you what it needs, but most people ignore this. And how do you overcome this? You have to change your thinking. And you change your thinking by becoming aware and listening and trusting yourself. There are very big signs when you need to rest. You know what they are. Your shoulders are tight. You have a headache. You're in a bad mood. You don't feel like doing something. You're tired. You have decreased energy, decreased motivation. You have a brain fog. Or when you do lie down to sleep, You have disrupted sleep patterns. Either you're sleepy during the day or you can't sleep at night. And you might find yourself susceptible to mild health issues, like you're susceptible to colds, you have headaches, you have stomach aches. These are the early signs. Once you start recognizing these things, take a break. Don't cover them up with coffee or stimulants, meaning drugs. 
why would you mask these symptoms? Why would you mask this plea for help, for change? These artificial stimulants do not help you do better, be better. All they do is they mask the symptoms. You drown out the warning signs that your body needs help. And don't worry, if you ignore them, they will get louder and louder and louder. It's unnecessary drama. It doesn't have to be like that. Make a decision that you're going to take care of yourself. Once you take care of yourself, you will be so much better able to take care of your work and your family and all the important things and relationships in your life. So let's talk about types of breaks. If you're resistant right now to taking a break, an actual break where you get up and do something different or rest, start with something very, very small and very easy. All I'm going to ask you to do is just switch tasks. If you're at the computer, let's say, and you've been going nonstop on a certain task that has to get done, eventually you'll start noticing you're making mistakes or you're slowing down. Then just switch tasks for a moment. Do something different. Pick an easier one. What that does, it allows the body to at least shift gears and change directions. It has to turn on different motor skills to do this new task. Start with that. It's a small step, but it's a good step. Then there is the mini break. A mini break can be five minutes. Everybody has five minutes. Every hour, just take five minutes and get up from what you're doing. It's five deliberate minutes. Get up, move around, rest your eyes, stretch your body. If you need a reason to do it, consider it a reward for an hour's worth of focused work. If you're used to pushing through, one hour is nothing. Take that five minutes and really enjoy and savor it. When you take your break, it's important to move. Movement breaks are essential. It allows the brain again to shift gears. If you've been sitting in one position, let's say at the computer for a long time, getting up and moving forces your brain to activate different muscles and it resets the ones that had been doing the work for a while. While you're on that movement break, change environments, go into a different room, get a different smell, get a different view. That also helps reset the brain. It refreshes your eyes and breaks up the monotony. Things you can do on your break to mix it up, move, as we just talked about, socialize, go talk to people. If you like to be alone, go into a different room and just breathe. Focus on your breathing. You can daydream. You can meditate, or you can open up the creative side, doodle, color, play a game. Just those few little things will do wonders to help you reset so that you can focus again on whatever it was you were doing. These little mini breaks will go a long way. They're very helpful. And if that's all you do, you're going to see noticeable improvement in your attitude, in your outlook, in your mood. But do you really want to decrease stress and improve morale? Do you have 20 minutes? That's all you need. I really, really recommend you carve out time for a power nap. A power nap or a cat nap is a little nap somewhere between 7 and 18 minutes. That is all you need. I'm not going to go into the science of why that is, but it has to do with your sleep cycle. Again, for those of you who like studies, many studies have shown, almost all studies have shown, that this little rest of less than 20 minutes is perfect because it allows you to shut down and reset before your body goes into the deeper sleep cycles. Perhaps you've noticed that if you take an hour nap midday, you end up feeling groggier and you just really can't get it together afterwards. So set an alarm for 15 minutes 17 minutes, you wake up feeling alert, surprisingly rested, and it's enough to get you through the rest of the day. It's enough to allow you to get that quality work and productivity that you may be searching for. I've been doing this for years, and it has been a game changer for me. I look forward to it. I've practiced so much that as soon as I put it in my mind that I'm going to take a nap, I set my alarm, and as soon as I close my eyes, I'm out. 
I have even woken up after nine minutes and have felt substantially better. And if you're thinking that there's no way you can do this because your job won't allow it, I promise you, you can make it work no matter what your job is like. Where there is a will, there is a way. And as long as you have the will, you can make it work. You can lie on the floor. You can put your head down at your desk. You can go sit in your car. You can go down to the lobby. If you're at home, you can lie down when your kids are asleep. Make it a part of your lunch hour. Most everybody has at least an hour for lunch. Take 20 minutes that is dedicated to nap time. And if you still don't buy that, it really is beneficial and is a sign of leadership because you are taking time to take care of yourself. Here are a list of some famous nappers. This is known fact that these people napped and they were proud about it. Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton, Napoleon Bonaparte, Albert Einstein, John F. Kennedy, Winston Churchill, these were all nappers. And I think it's safe to say that they were high producers as well. A nap actually can improve your success. Here are the pros again of taking a break. You're resetting your brain. You're creating a new psychological space when you come back after a rest. It improves your memory retention. When you take a break, your decision fatigue decreases. It's your inability to make a proper decision, to make a good decision, to use proper judgment. It is always better to make a decision from a clear state of mind, a rested state of mind. When you take a break, it also allows you to step back and look at what you've been doing. Sometimes when you're so close up working on something, you can't see what it looks like because it's too close. Step back, look at it from that distance, and you'll find things that you may have missed. Of course, it breaks up monotony and it decreases your stress. And when your stress levels are decreased, your nervous system is going to turn off that fight or flight mode. You're going to soothe your nervous system. Your body is going to function so much better. You're going to have increased energy and motivation, increased productivity, and increased sense of well-being. And when you're happy, everyone around you is happy. And this is just taking short breaks throughout the day. You can take a longer break, and these are very necessary and wonderful. Know when you need to take a longer break and make it happen. Here are some ways that you can do it. Go on vacation. Yes, take the vacation. Use your vacation days. You can go on a dream trip. You can get away from your space for a little while. But if you have the time and you don't really want to go away or you don't have the money to go away right now, then do a staycation. You stay in your home and you just rest, you sleep, you nap, you watch movies, you take baths, you don't answer your phone or your emails. Sometimes that's even better than going on a vacation. And then of course there is the playcation, which is a staycation, except you're doing things that are really, really fun. You go sightseeing in your own town. You go do activities that you normally don't do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's like a vacation, but in your hometown. And the goal is to have as much fun as possible. Those longer breaks also go a tremendously long way in improving everything about your life. And finally, I really want to talk about the importance of sleep, of sleeping well every night. If you're someone who doesn't like to sleep or you can't sleep, you think you can't sleep, I'd like to encourage you to really change your mind about that. Sleep is so important for so many things, not just your mind and your emotional state, but for your brain function. A tremendous amount of cellular repair happens every night while you're sleeping. When your muscles are resting, when your eyes are resting, when your brain is resting, your body goes to work repairing organs, repairing tissue, and this in turn will increase your immune function. It will decrease inflammation in your body, decrease depression. One of the best benefits of sleeping is that if you have some negative momentum going, when you go to sleep, it shuts that down. It gives you a break from continuing down that rabbit hole. And when you wake up, you start fresh. You don't have to keep going down that path. You can make another turn. You've stepped away from it long enough that you can start over, hit the reset button, and go in a different direction. 
Sleeping allows you to check out from your reality, especially if your perceived reality is not one that you're enjoying. You feel better when you wake up. And when you feel better, you have improved interactions, improved relationships, improved productivity, improved attitude, all good things. Nothing bad happens from sleeping. Everyone has different amounts of time. That is the proper amount. I know someone who only needs four hours of sleep and she functions just fine. Some people, especially if you're younger, 10, 11 hours, but I think the average is six to eight hours. Also, your sleep cycle, if you pay attention to it, you will find when your optimal cycle is. And if you can work within that, that's awesome. For example, for me, I have discovered after many years of trial and error that my optimal sleep schedule is from between two and three in the morning to nine to 10 in the morning, with my most productive hours being from about 8 p.m. to two. At this point in my life, I have the luxury to keep that schedule and it works great for me. Before, when I was younger, when I had smaller children, when I had to be up at an earlier time, I would find that even though I was sleeping the same seven or eight hours, if it was between, let's say, 11 p.m. and 7, I was definitely going to have to take a nap midday in order to make it through. Now that I've recognized my ideal sleep schedule, I find that if I sleep within that time period, I do not have to take a nap throughout the day. I don't know the scientific study behind that. That is just my personal experience. And perhaps you want to do this experiment with yourself. Let me know the results. When is the best time to take a break? Anytime you feel you need it, take it. Is there ever a time not to take a break? In general, the answer is no. I would say that it is only unnecessary to take a break when you're in the flow. You know what I mean by flow? You're in the zone. Things are going great. You're moving along effortlessly. You'll know when you're in it because you're going to be enjoying what you're doing so much that you don't want to stop. You don't feel tired. You are inspired. And that's that inspired action that I was talking about earlier. That is what you want to shoot for rather than, quote, good stress. Good stress usually comes from a negative place. Inspired action comes from just that, inspiration. So what do you think? Did I make a convincing argument? Can you please give yourself a break? Let's have fun with the word break. Taking a break will help you eliminate the backbreaking load that you do not need to carry. It'll help you break out of a rut. It'll help you break away from some bad habits. It'll help you break in some new good habits. It'll help you break through some barriers that have been holding you back. It'll help you avoid an outbreak of health problems and prevent breakdowns and prevent relationship breakups, which leads to heartbreak. In short, when you're rested, you are unbreakable. I'm not yelling at you here. I just really want you to be your best and you can be your best. It's so easy and it does not require sacrifice at all. Go ahead and do it. Do it. Try it. You're so worthy and you'll be really, really delighted at the results. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I hope you gained a new perspective and I really hope that you will decide to incorporate some of this into your life. Just something small, whatever it is, it definitely will not hurt you. So that's it for now, everyone. Please join me again next Tuesday for another instructional interview. And it is a good one. To make sure you don't miss it, please subscribe to this podcast and it'll be delivered right to you. You don't need to go searching for it every week. It makes it very convenient. Just hit the subscribe button on Apple or whatever platform you're listening to. You can also get the links for all the platforms where this podcast is featured on my website, howtolife.com. This specific episode can be found directly at howtolife.com slash 020. If you need a quick little video on how to do a basic life skill, you can check out my YouTube channel, How to Life, for very, very, very short momenars on how to do all kinds of random basic life skills. I post a new one every week, so if you're missing something, it'll show up eventually. If you want it to show up faster, you can send me an email to drlj at howtolife.com. And as I'm picking up some speed and momentum, you can follow along with me on Instagram at howtolifenow. 
I will speak to you all next week. Until then, have a great week. Make it awesome. Get some sleep. Rest up so that you can be your best. And don't worry too much about anything. You're doing a great job and all is really, really well. You got this. Thank you.